Let's find out why this letter amongst all of Betty Fosbury's mail has caught my attention the most. Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. If you're just joining me, I have acquired a stack of letters from Betty Fosbury, Mrs Betty Fosbury, and some of the letters in the pack date back to the 1930s. Those are the ones that I've been focusing in on. You can tell the date there because they've got a king on the stamp. So if you're new here to the Betty Letter saga, it all started when I was doing my junk journal July page spread for wallpaper and which is um, linked at the end of the video and I discovered a very special letter from Mrs Nellie Brown. I had previously put them in these sort of envelopes that I'd made myself through my crafting projects because they had no original letter and it just felt a shame that it didn't have its letter because the words within were, you know, lovely, kind and I just wanted to preserve that uh, friendship. But then the intrigue started off and I thought, oh, I think I've got more letters and so I went through my thing and when you read one letter alone it's an intrigue but when you realise you've got a series of letters like a whole pack of letters from somebody's life that's quite intriguing what well, has been for me so that's been my junk journaling journey over the last week and I'm now going to conclude some of it for you uh, from the 1930s side at least and also I'm going to tap into the junk journaling July prompts from yesterday which is maximalism and today's prompt is paint splatter. So I will weave all of this together in this video and I hope that you find fun and value here. Okay if you'd like to subscribe to the channel do click the link and maybe the bell icon because I'm apologising to you now I cannot always get the uploads at the same time uh, through internet connection and also my own time planning but I endeavour to be more organised in the future. Now Miss Betty Pamal is a young unmarried Betty. We know that because she received her exam results and she did very well at school. She lives at this address, Wavertree Nook Road in Liverpool, and it is really in the heart of Liverpool. She, she is a Liverpudlian. Well, she might not be, but that's where they're living. And then this is her grandparents' address, and they live outside of Liverpool, nearer Manchester. Now, I've looked up both of these addresses yesterday and both properties are of value, high value. So they, she comes from a nice home. Betty lives in a five-bedroom house and today it's still there and it is very, very nice. It's on a nice area and it's worth a substantial amount of money for the area where it sits. Uh, now, the same goes for her grandparents, Mr and Mrs Salisbury, who live in Flixton. Now, that is a very n a nice place. They look out over a massive playing field and uh, they also uh, lived in a very nice area. Although the ho this house is no longer there, it has now been rebuilt with a modern building. And it could be because it might have been bombed in the war. Betty comes from a good home let's put it and she is doing really well at school so her parents are extremely proud everything's going very well and there's money in this family okay so that's what I know just going to get this underway so I can tell you the rest of the story so um, I'm going to just put down some glue here just where I think I might want to place some collage bits. So just uh, while I'm doing this you can see the the king's stamp there in blue. That is a stamp that came out in 1937. Now we don't have a postage mark on here and the author has not put the date on um, beyond the the month he hasn't put the year but the stamp is important because that came out in 1937 and we know that because in 1936 um king george v and his wife 
um, Mary, Queen Mary, uh, King George V died in 1936. So that's relevant because this is a new stamp for the new king, which is uh, the our current queen. This is her father. Um, also, this is my Indian summer journal. And to be fair, it has been the hottest summer that we have ever had on record in the UK. Um, so I didn't plan that at all. <laughs> But it has been hot and we have been looking and I've been journaling the sun and the heat from the sun has been in this craft room for the entire week that I've been studying the Betty letters. OK, did you see what I did Just there? ran my bone folder over the corner of the napkin so that I'm able to separate without any need for sellotape. I can now just carefully peel away the top one. And looking at the pattern, you can see it's got an Indian feel to it. I can't tell you why I am adding Indian fabrics and things to the journal. Uh, I've never been to India. I have no connection to India. <laughs> I can't tell you. But as I said, when I first started this project, this journal is making itself. So I am just going with whatever feels right and allowing the journal to take place. And at the moment, it's wanting this napkin to go in it. So there we go. I'm going to just tear off some of this napkin and put that down. Right, so we, so we know we've got the King George stamp there and that puts it in the time frame of 1937. 1936, the year before the King died. So that's where we are. We're a year on from that. Um, OK. Right, that, so that is important, that 1936, for this story that I'm about to tell you. So it's the time when the kings are changing. Um, now, if, and if you know your history, you've had the King die, King George V died, and it is passed on. Next King would be the eldest son. Now, we know that that was Edward and King Edward and he had to abdicate because he wanted to marry Wallace Simpson and Wallace Simpson was an American and that was not going to be something that was possible for him to, to do because uh, Wallace Simpson was a divorced lady uh, so nothing to do with her being from America. It was more for the fact that she was divorced and because he was going to have to be the head of the, of the um, Christian church, the head, of the head of the English church, uh, being the king, that was an issue. So that, that's one of the reasons. So if you know the story of Wallace Simpson, there's, there's, that has happened. So he's abdicated and now we have the brother, um, George. He does not want to be king, uh, neither did his wife, who is the queen's mother. Uh, they didn't want it. They didn't welcome it. It was a shock for them, um, a major shock. And also, if you've watched the king's speech, the Oscar-winning king's speech with uh, Colin Firth, that will tell you that, the, the, that this is this king and he was the one who had the stutter and had to work really hard to deliver his speeches to the people. And at the time, we didn't have television uh, broadcast. They just didn't do that. It was all over the radio, over the wireless. That's where we are in history. Right, good. So then the next thing is to tell you that around this time, it's an incredibly exciting time because it is just before the war. So we're all coming out of the Great Depression and everything is moving forward in the right direction. And one fantastic thing that's going on, certainly where we're based here in Liverpool um, and, um, and the Midlands and the North and certainly Scotland, is that a fantastic ship is being built. That is being built in Scotland, in Clydebank, creating the most amazing amount of jobs for the area. 
So if you imagine we've had the Great Depression, everybody's struggling after the First World War. That hit the world. Um, that will resonate over in America as well. Um, and Canada, of course. Everywhere. And the two companies that were trying to build this massive ship so think think of the Titanic without the sinking. This is the sort of ship that they were trying to build again 24 years on from the Titanic being built. And they wanted to build this incredible ocean liner that would be a transatlantic link between Britain and America and also France and uh, other places along the way as it was to connect these countries uh, for alliance and friendship and a swapping of culture and in this time it was called the glamour year think about all the hollywood movies and and the stars and yes it was all up and coming and decadent wonderful uh, boat that was being built so it's not even a boat it's a massive ship ma huge absolutely huge it's 1000 and 19 feet long, it's 81 tonnes, it's 250 feet bigger than the Titanic and it has the most amazing technology and all the modern possible engineering that they could muster to ensure that this was not going to bestow the same fate as the Titanic. There were also two ships building companies that were trying to um, race to build this ship first. You had Cunard and you had White Star. The whole project stalled. It was starting to work out in the 1930, 1930, but the whole project stalled because of money. Didn't have any. So the British government said because it was so very important to build friendship and alliance over overseas they wanted to stump up the money so the government will fund the project or match the project if the two companies Cunard and White Star could combine and collaborate work together pool their resources, pool their money, and then the British government would stump up the, the remaining amount that was needed to complete it. They collaborated, they had to, it was so important. And that's what they did. So Scotland were able to have these uh, fantastic jobs, and I'll put up a picture here of the ship being built. Well, it was set, due to set sail uh, from Southampton, going to New York, so it leaves Scotland in 1936 after being named the Queen Mary after the current Queen and um, she's incidentally at this time, uh, this is the last thing that they do together as a major public thing before the King died that year, uh, but she is the Empress of India. So that was interesting. And then... This all links into what I'm now going to tell you here is that the maiden voyage for the Queen Mary, the SS Queen Mary or the RMS, the Royal Mail Ship, Queen Mary linking Britain and New York and, and America and all of the mail and the letters and the people that could now be part of a... Um, a four, it's only four days to get there because it was such a fast boat that it was a it was a rip roaring success. So I'm opening this mail from Betty and I was having a little look at it and I wasn't really paying her too much attention because I'm just scanning through the letter and it's really really quite long. It's only on one side, but I'm just you know I just, I didn't I didn't really look at the address or anything so I'm, I'm going through it and I'm reading that Betty's dad has been in poor health so that wasn't very good and then I'm reading that um, 
whoever this is, it turns out to be Uncle John, um, would like to c come back. He can't wait till he can get back. But he said, I don't think I will see you before about July, but I will try to give you a game of croakers, which is croquet. Um, and that's a, it was a very out, outdoors British a game with a ball and a mallet and that would have been played on the green well I've looked up where they lived and of course there's this massive green perfect for croquet and so that's what would have been going on he would have come and played them he said but I think I'm going to get licked because I haven't been playing much lately he said I've been busy and tired and these days it's all rush but we did have one good trip over Britain up has been very bad. It's been a very bad winter at sea, rolling all over the place, difficult to keep one's feet. So it looks like better weather. I'm longing to see Auntie's new frock and coat. The weather was so bad when I went home last. We never even went out with a new coat and hat even. I was suggesting for her to buy a suit. I think she would look very smart in, a, in one she used to do. And even though she's got a little plump, got all she she used to do. So it was at this point I'm thinking, oh, he's at sea. And then I had a look at the address. And I looked very carefully. And of course I could read SS Queen Mary. And so he has written this from on board the SS Queen Mary. Cunard White Star Limited, Cunard Building, Liverpool, because it, the Cunard White Star Company is based in Liverpool. And he's writing this on April the 17th, and we know that it's 1937. So I thought, wow, that's really, really interesting. Although he's going on about poor health and Apparently Aunt Polly might have passed away and, you know, there's a lot of news. He's not giving much away about life on board. Um, but what we do know is that this was... He was going over to New York They and then he would have come back that following week and then he would have stayed at home for maybe 10 days and then he would have get shipped back out again but he was employed so they had um, a very very tough job and it's, a, it's hugely important in anybody's history if you have been looking up your family tree and you have relatives from um, England from Britain because that was a time in 1937 um, 36 37 and 39 where people were being transported quite readily and safely across the water in, in super quick time because it could travel at the rate of 30 knots. So also it was transporting um, dignitaries like Winston Churchill. And Uncle Johnny probably was on board during this time. He's got royalty, he's got celebrities, Hollywood celebrities like Bob Hope and Clark Gable, Laurel and Hardy and oh, all, all sorts of uh, people that would have been on board. And it was a time where people were feeling they were very connected, so relationships were forming and people had um, sweethearts in, in two different countries and the long-distance relationship started. But the letters were able to get over there because it was also the RMS Queen Mary. RMS stands for Royal Mail Ship. So it was taking all of our original snail mail was being delivered. So this is a wonderful piece of history here from Uncle John who's written in and um, he, he's saying about how he's longing to see his wife and can't wait to get back. Um, he wants to have a game of croquet. He can't wait to be back in England in, in April but everything's taking such a long time. They don't celebrate Good Friday where he went so he had a funny um, time um, ashore where he wasn't able to uh, celebrate Easter in, in such the same way as he might at home and just it just sounds like he's, he's quite homesick um, and then they mention about the birds that they've looked after and I and there's also some a sentence in here about well done with her exams and how brilliant it is that she has um, been given a, 
a school. She's at a school so close to home. Well, I think he means his home uh, near Manchester. So I think that Betty may have even stayed there with the grandparents. That's where they were able to play croquet. And then there's mention of them looking after birds, rescuing birds. So we've got Widdy is a bird. Now that could be Iddy Widdy, like it's a tiny bird. Widdy, a little affectionate name for a small bird or a rescue bird or a budgerigar probably. And um, and he's referred to his as Dicky Boy. Well, Dicky, Dicky Bird. That's that's an affectionate name for a bird in in England. Um, and you could also have a Dicky Leg, meaning you've injured your leg. So it could mean that they're rescuing birds. These two, Betty and her uncle, and looking after them. Or you know they just love birds. There's there's just this there's connection with birds that have featured in in the letters. And I think it, it's just, it's a really lovely touching letter from an uncle to his niece and uh, just e explaining that, uh, that that he he won't be home for her birthday, which is in June, because he's not expected to come home until July. And he's saying, take care of Widdy. What with your Widdy and our dicky boy? I don't know. Well, cheerio, Betty. And give my love to Mummy and Daddy. All the best. TTFN. Best love, Uncle. I'll be seeing you and tell Auntie your stocking size and I will get you a pair for your birthday. I know it's in June, but I've forgotten the date. Just like me. <laughs> so, so there we go. So he's gone off to America in search of stockings for Betty's birthday. And he wants to buy a suit for his wife to make her all happy and pretty. And the whole thing's just jolly. It's a jolly time. And how exciting is that for the family? They've got a son that's working on the RMS St Mary. Transatlantic travel, incredibly exciting time. And if you look at the pictures, the decadent opulence that is inside this ship is off the chart for that time and era. And uh, so that's why I was very excited because it's all before the Second World War and they do call it the glory years, the glamour years. And you can see the Hollywood actresses and um, uh, the uh, Queen Queen um, Mother would have travelled on there as well. And not just for the rich and famous, but for others as well. So I have, I've been inspired by this letter. Obviously you can tell I'm, I'm gushing. But uh, I have also been printing up some of the ephemera that I found surrounding it as well. And inside the envelope here, of course, we don't know where Uncle Johnny worked on board the boat because he, this came with the letter and he hasn't written his rank. But I do know that he's John Salisbury because uh, we've got another letter that talks about their son, John uh, coming home so I can tell you that he does come home for the birthday and hopefully he's not forgotten the stockings because uh, that was interesting. I'm just going to cut this out so I've scanned it in and I just thought if anybody else has been inspired or interesting in this time and era of 1937 um, and through to 1939 and obviously we've got the 60s coming in as well I am putting together images from, from this story and if you'd like me to make them available in, in the form of a digital kit I, I'd be quite keen to offer it because I'm, I'm doing it for myself anyway so it wouldn't take much to just load it up for you. I've got one of my altered envelopes here which I've dyed and I'm just going to cover it. This um, ship was very decadent in, in all its uh, 1930s art deco decor and it had a swimming pool and oh, all these this amazing cocktail bar and lounge and upper deck. Uh, we even had a cinema, two cocktail bars, a swimming pool, a grand ballroom and a squash court. So it was the height of a luxury. Well, that was all fine, going really well until 1939 and it had its final voyage, which was a final peacetime voyage, which was in um, the, I think it was August of 1939, and then in September, 
war was declared and we had a lot of people going from the UK, from Britain, leaving from Southampton, which isn't far from where I live, and they were fleeing, fleeing Britain to go to New York. Well, they may have been American or had connection there, um, or just fleeing because of the uneasy threat of war in Europe. And so that's why we had everybody trying to cram onto this boat, the uh, Queen Mary, and you would have definitely have had Uncle Johnny aboard uh, looking after things because that was his job and unless, you, don't, you don't change from a job as good as that. You just don't, so he definitely would have been there. And when he got, when they all got to America, um, war had been declared and they couldn't get back. So the ship was told to dock and remain and they got stranded. So we don't know because somebody's taken all of the wartime letters out of Betty's pack. We do not know if Uncle John uh, was okay. I'm sure he probably was because pleasure cruising uh, started up very, very soon after war had finished so that we could get everybody home. But... Um, yeah, interesting piece of history in that one little letter that has led me on to researching it all. Um, you, you sort of you think you know it, but you don't really, and it's you know it's not relevant. But when you wonder, oh, what did Uncle Johnny do? Which one was he aboard the SS Queen Mary? I'm taking off this envelope because the original has been sliced open with a letter opener. And I'm going to just do the same here. Take, take that off. So, yeah, I've, I've wondered if... Um, I've had a lot of people writing in saying that they are enjoying the Betty letters and the story. And obviously this now ties in with people uh, from countries that are actually watching the video uh, just as much as it is people from the UK and I just wondered if you would be interested in, in having getting hold of a copy of the kit and if so I shall make some really nice background papers and put a bit of effort into making uh, doing a really good job on the art side of things uh, not just the ephemera which you can see me cutting out here uh, these are things that I found and I'm um, pleased to have, have even got them it's amazing, I'll show you I've got the original, um, these wonderful tea cards from the era. And if you can see that, um, it, it has got the St. Mary ship with the New York skyline in the back there. Incredible. So I've got that, and I thought what I'd do here, I've um, scanned them in. I'm going to just um, cut them out in a minute and... Put them, put them in here. So this is fun as well. This is um, telling you all about the uh, cocoa powder that you could buy. So I've got this that could be a little booklet tuck thing. I quite like that. So I think I think what I'll do is I'll just I'll put the kit together and I'll make it available. And then of course it's there for anybody who'd like to have a go. And if this speaks to you on any level, because your family are from here and you have a connection with the Queen Mary as a mode of transport that your perhaps your family came uh, over either way on that ship then it's quite fun to have some memorabilia because when they were launching the boat oh can you imagine that's so exciting to be in the UK at that time like Betty so she would have been hearing all of this she probably had this uh, children's silver badge cocoa so hot chocolate and there's a free boat inside every tin and um, if you collect the vouchers you can put it towards free holiday travel wow wow you know that's fun we don't get that little boats inside our tins of chocolate lovely why don't we have that anymore um, and then on the other side of it it's talking about the fabrics that were on in board the Queen Mary all the 1930s fabrics uh, so the Queen Mary ship 
uh, it, it didn't sink. It is still able to be viewed today and those in the know will realise that it's actually in California at the moment and will will be remaining to stay there uh, at Long Beach, California. So it's possible to visit it as a day day visitor and it's possible to stay on it for a, for a, um, a holiday. So that is opening, I've looked it up on their website, reopening because it's been shut for a long time. This year in October it's, it's uh, down to open after all the massive amount they've spent on it to get it back up to its original standard. And um, I just think that's wonderful. I think that's really great. I wonder if we could find out if John Salisbury was on the sh on the ship crew member and, and what was his job role. Did he look after the uh, people when they had their high tea on the deck? Because maybe that's why Betty puts on a good tea. And what about all the women that were polishing all the silver? They had a whole army of people there. There's a big list of all the different jobs that you would have had aboard. So it must have been quite an exciting thing to work on. I mean, look at the size of it and all the luggage and the packaging and then the engine rooms and oh just cool and then down here uh, this is the soap that they had and that will be used in the luxury cabins and the cloakrooms and, uh, then it says where it's from Cheshire well that's just down the road from Betty I've printed out the letter but it hasn't I've got to tinker with it because it hasn't come out as brilliantly as the original well the, the original was written in pencil so we're only getting a very um, so I've got that I've got all the bits I've cut out this is all to do with the all to do with the ship but I'm going to have some birds and some things as well I've got a list here of all the different uh, jobs involved and some facts a fact oh. there's an old puzzle box uh, you could have had a jigsaw puzzle as a gift from the Cunard White Star and that was for the children because there's lots of children. They had a massive play area there for the kids and and then we've got this fun um, poster and then of course that's where you would have been heading was New York and these are the oh these are the medals medallions that you could, that people could win and they were commemorative. I've got to tidy up that edge but they can be punched out. And it just uh, says it was number 554. That was the boat before it was named the Queen Mary. Johnny was on board this ship. He worked. He missed his wife. He was longing to come home. Uh, it was tiring and busy work. But uh, we do know that he also would have gone out and got stranded over in New York. And when the war was declared... So I'm going to ink around the edge of some of these little elements that are coming with it just to age up all of that and then you'll see the fabrics and all about that and then I've got the marble this. columns and things that were inside there inside the ship were made of these beautiful frescoes and wonderful decadent marbles and so I thought I could just fussy cut that beautiful shape of the leaf out of this sepia image here and maybe that might look good over there and just build up a page which is uh, more is more that's the theme today and I think that uh, definitely what I've got here has been larger than life because we never imagined in a million moments that um, Betty's letters were going to take us um, abroad to America and all the things that she would have been able to hear about, all the stories and uh, how exciting is that for, you know, we wasn't possible to travel to America so easily and quickly. Um, and he probably would have brought back interesting things, certainly stockings and chocolates and Hershey bars and whatever else you could have brought back in that time and era. And um, that all before being stranded over there.
Then I've got tea cards here. Again, I'm going to age those edges there. So we've got the back there and it tells you about the tea. Well, the tea came from Birmingham, so that wasn't far away either. And so to stage that down because the originals are darker. So you really want to get the ink on that if you're going to uh, have a go at this. And they can be something that goes inside the envelope. Or maybe we'll have something over here. That could be more fun. Uh, right, so the Queen Mary. Well, I did not see that coming. Oh, well, my page isn't big enough. <laughs> I might have to have a bit of artistic license here and lose some of the... Spike, when the ship was docked and war was declared and they all had to stay put in 1939, there's a letter from John's parents who are getting a bit worried because they haven't seen him because the, his car, so John's got a car on the ship who's obviously earning good money, so he's been able to get a car, only it's not that great because it's broken down, so his parents didn't see him. So as a worry, did they not see him before he went off on the um, boat, which was the one that wouldn't have been coming back? And, uh, yeah, just li just little interest, uh, just unexplained little things that won't, won't, I will never know because somebody's taken the letters um, and has... You know, sold them on for money because they're wartime letters. Which is the shame because letters before uh, build up the story. But, yeah, that, that is what it is. So the history of the ship then goes somewhat more, more uh, away from the decadent glory days of movie stars and high teas on the deck and overnight uh, it stops being a pleasure cruise and becomes a warship and what they have to do is paint the ship grey from top to bottom to cam camouflage it and it is dubbed the grey ghost and then it is because it is such a fast ship the fastest one that we had at the time the world had you know um it could outrun torpedoes and things like that. So what they did was they they camouflaged the ship and then they transported up to 16,000 troops on this boat and put them where they needed to go. And uh, so all the history of that in the World War is something, if you're interested, you can look it up. But now it is available to go and visit. And certainly it's then carried on doing what it had intended to do, which was be a pleasure ship uh, connecting us all together. Oh no, that's perfect. I should have done the other one. Yeah, great. So they're great. So they punch out with a uh, one and a half inch hole punch. These tea cards, I've got this one as well, like the Hello Sailor. So that is that going to be added in. You can see that in the library on board the ship, couldn't you? And also you could buy your tobacco and your all sorts of things on board. And then all the talk of the bird. Oh, I've got Uncle John's letter, so I'd better have that. Because he seemed like a nice uncle writing in. They obviously had a nice relationship and they were talking about the birds and looking after birds. And we know that Betty ended up doing that later in life as well. She was looking after Nelson, the parrot, from Mrs Brown, who was poorly in hospital. She was in hospital for a month, so Betty had to run round and look after it. <laughs> and then she came out... And then Betty had, um, this is in 1961, I believe, 1962. This is the hi high light of when they were looking after foster children 
um, because they had they had children. Um, oh, there's a there's a letter there from the the council of the from the children's department just uh, saying about a boy that was in her care. And uh, yeah, so that's all. It's all part of uh, somebody's wonderful life and what they they achieved and how they went from a very nice upbringing and then had to go through the you know the atrocities of of war and war torn britain afterwards and picking up the pieces in in very small part it just it's just a village outside of liverpool with a very small population a church and a and a pub called the Harp Inn, and a school, and a hospital, and uh, you know just the shop, and that was it. Not re you know not very much at all. So it was all everybody had to help everybody else. That's Widdy, Widdy, that's its name, Widdy, Widdy the uh, budgie, and then so I'll glue that down, and then we've got our commemorative coins which is all part of it. So, you know, anything like that, we were all um, want to c collect the commemorative coins. That would have quite liked a grey colour around that, probably. So I could just uh, link those up, but I needed to punch them out to make them perfect, actually, because that's still a little bit wide. So we'll just use artistic licence over here and we'll just overlap like that. I think that's quite nice. And then we've got the bird there. Uh, or perhaps they want to be up here. Oh, we have the bird. Have the birdie. And let's get our new, uh, an, an element from the New York skyline. I would try not to imagine King Kong hanging off of it. <laughs> from the movies, because that is definitely all from that era as well. That's Uncle John's letter. So we want that. So this is the special supplement that you get, um, would have got. All about it. And then that goes up there like that. And I've also got the report card here, which I have um, scanned in. And the letter from Molly Lyman, which was her congratulations, which was the uh, all from that era so this is all the 1930s bit um, and this was uh, heartiest felicitations just just a wonderful way of speaking <laughs> really really fun and um, just quite eccentric so I like that so I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to stick it together with the other one to, to make the report card and then the more you spend time with it making it uh, nice the better it, the better it is because that all looks like the original you can even see the weave of the paper on it I like that yep so it's quite fun working with a kit I didn't want to damage the original and so it's been fun to scan that in um, I don't want to craft with it because it feels a bit too special now that I've spent time with it, learning about it all. Um, and just from an ordinary person just leading me down the garden path here to come up with the most amazing intrigue into her past and history that has connected so many people over the years. I think that's really, really interesting. Um, aboard a ship, you know. So I perhaps would quite like something up there and I'm thinking that this is a good idea to have that London tea card up there. So we're going to have that. And then when you take all of this out to look at it, you've got a little flip up here so you can say what it's all about. That's a really cool idea. We'll just age that up, otherwise it looks a bit like a new piece of paper, so that's fine. Done. Good. 
Right, everybody back in. I'll tell you what is annoying me, this bit here. This was an envelope that I dyed using um, onion skin. So that was um, red onion skin gives green. That's quite nice there. Okay, so that's that. So we've got the report card, the fabrics, the letter from Uncle John and his special ticket that I found. That's all going in the envelope now. TTFN, I love that. That's all part of it and it's just great. And then I can make the other front bit available with the address just if you're interested in the historical side of things that I've been talking about. We can certainly do all of that make a full kit out of it all. And um, so that goes in there like that. Then I think I'll have down here where we're actually going, which is New York, so that ties in. And um, fun to have another flip, I think. So we'll lose the Thai foo bit on the back if I do that. Or I could just have it in there. And then we're going to have the budgie here and the commemorative coins. And just to finish this off, I found this Art Deco card. I'm not really sure what it's dirt is supposed to do. Um, but I like the strips, so I'm just going to add some strips of this decadent gold, which most definitely would have been on board the ship. And um, I'm going to run a bit along there. Oh my goodness, I have just, I have just delved into my imagination here with lots of things, and I just think it's a really kind of, it's a very interesting era. And with lots of interesting art elements with the beautiful Art Deco uh, inspiration as well. And I think that's a really nice, really nice um, era to craft with, you know. Well, what wants to go there? That's quite fun. Just uh, delving into my scrappy bits now and tags and tickets and things just to add some extra. Uh, more is more on this one. This is a sticker. Bead of glue all the way along. Dealing with fabric so we want to make sure that we've got a nice thickness there for it to stick to. Just wanted to make sure that the bird's feet weren't flying around and they, they had something to stick down to. I, I, I want to keep that clear. Um, but it does look like something wants to go up there. So maybe it's this scrap here. I really hope you've enjoyed listening into my uh, little my little uh, findings and uh, it's not been too off the wall for you. Uh, it is our history for all all countries that have uh, listened in and it because it was the start of being connected to everybody and um, from from England you know to everywhere else certainly from our country but uh, vice versa as well and when we find we've got connections here or relatives or family uh, from Australia New Zealand South Africa um, you know we we are so lucky to be able to have had those connections over the years and that deep history with uh, all all the different countries and just seeing people write in to me from the different areas and to have found value in in what I'm doing here which is piecing together little shards of information and snippets of life from bygone ages with vintage spreads but but really delving into it uh, this this time round captured a bit of imagination for people uh, you know all over the world and uh, and we're sending our little butterfly ripple effect to maybe have a look at your own heritage and think 
is this something that is from your past? Did this boat carry your great grandma? Did this boat have some special meaning for you connecting people um, across the waters f to to America? And um, I've I've had a lovely time researching my history and. Um, Lisa, who wrote in about genealogy, I think is fascinating, isn't it, to really start delving into the senses of um, delving into this sort of thing. If ever you've looked up on heritage sites, uh, you'll be familiar with this sort of piece of paper that you're uh, trying to look and see if your family and name appears on these lists and ledgers of uh, bygone times. What did they do? Where did they live? What was their address? And then being able to look up and see if the house still exists. Well, that gives you an idea of what sort of um, lifestyle they might have had. Well, Betty, she ha she came from a five-bedroom house and she had a, a brother and a sister, I believe. There seem to be John and Mary are mentioned, so they are, they are her siblings. And it sounds like she might have been the younger one. Oh, people's lives. But um, it resonates with all of us, doesn't it? So let's just finish this off now. And I will let you go on your way. OK, then I found some tickets that I think are quite um, good. Because we've got, we know that there was a hospital on board. So that's a druggist, a drug druggist. That's a chemist, otherwise known as. And then I just stick those down. And I quite like then the background. That looks like vintage wallpaper. So that will just fill in that gappy bit up there. And um, then this bit here, I just feel like I want to have that there. So I'm just going to cut cut this beautiful bro brocade. Beautiful this is. Just away from the pink uh, uh, as much as possible without damaging it. I really hope that... Uh, you would like to join in uh, and if you do um, you know let me know and I'll make this available to download that's going on there like that um, and then I think you know everything's covered I can't see any blank bits that are frustrating me so I think we've got our. I think we've got our uh, page now. The only thing I'm supposed to be doing today is the prompt is to do paint splatters. So I, I better do that. I better do it. Some splats here, which is uh, gone everywhere. <laughs> it's like snow. If you can see it. Oh, I like that very much. And then we can write the dates and things on there. I'm giving it all my royal seal of approval here with a wax seal that we made earlier in a previous video just to finish that off for that bit there. And I hope that ties together all my storytelling of today and certainly has allowed for some fun little bits of ephemera here, lots of finds and um, just some real interesting history uh, and discoveries that we've made along the way together. And if you'd like to um, have a look at, I will produce a kit, uh, I shall do that anyway, um, but if you, if you think that that is going to be something of value, I'll, I'll push for it a bit quicker and then uh, make it available to you at a discount and uh, 
for everybody that supported me as I have uh, discovered this idea that in the last uh, week or so and all your wonderful comments of su and support have pushed me I, d I just wouldn't have I wouldn't have developed this as far as I have if you hadn't have written in and encouraged me so um, I would like to offer you a discount for the kit if I uh, if I put it all together and and do that quite quickly while we're still thinking about it all. But if you'd like to, do let me know and uh, I will make everything available and all the ephemera bits and everything I've found and, of course, the letters as well. OK, guys, so thank you so much for joining me and listening to all my ramblings. I hope you have found value here. And above everything else, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye-bye now.